Okay, welcome to our post-game press conferences. A couple reminders. Please silence all cell phones. Please make sure that you, there is no cell phone video or flash photography or video cameras in the press conferences. Media may access press conference video at the NCAA digital workroom. Our format today is an opening statement from the head coach and then questions for the players. Please raise your hand when you have a question and we'll bring the microphone to you. Please identify yourself by name and affiliation prior to each question, if you would, please. With that, we'll go to the opening statement from Coach Lisa Bluter. <sighs> um, first of all, I said it earlier in the week that West Virginia was not an eight seed. Um, there is no way. This, that team is really good. Um, Mark has done a great job in his year that he's been there, and uh, they played really, really hard. But um, I, I really do think that was one of the better defensive teams we've seen all year. I'm so proud of our team for only having six turnovers in the second half against that pressure defense. That's keeping your composure, especially when they tied it up. Um, and this might have been our lowest field goal percentage that we've ever won a game with. We found a way to win in a different way, and, and we won with our defense tonight. We, we out-rebounded them by seven. Um, we valued the ball, uh, a little bit shaky to begin with, but we valued the ball, and um, our defense was pretty good tonight. Everybody talks about our offense, but I think our defense was pretty good tonight. Okay, we'll go to questions for Caitlin Clark and Hannah Stolke, and please address your questions to one of the student athletes if you would. We'll start in the back there, Scott Docterman, go ahead. Hi, Scott Docterman with The Athletic. This is for Caitlin. Um, at one juncture, you just kind of, you, you went back to the free throw line when, when Hannah was shooting, smiled, uh, you made a heart, you did it, at that point, did it feel like you could almost relax that you saw the victory within your grasp? Yeah, I think for sure. I think our team's really good about playing until the final buzzer, but you know, I'm really proud of Hannah. She missed two free throws there early in the fourth quarter and she comes back and I think she makes four in a row. Um, and that's tough to do as somebody that, you know, has really worked on her free throw shooting. Um, but we all have confidence in her and to be in those pressure, pressure situations and to really step up to the line and make four in a row after missing two in a row is, is tough. And um, she extended it to a three possession game for us. So I think that definitely gives you a lot of confidence. And with the way our defense had been playing all night, I knew um, if we could extend it to three possessions, you know, we were going to be, you know, pretty good um, from there on out. So I'm just really proud of her, honestly. Holly Rowe, ESPN. Go ahead, Holly. This is for Hannah Stolke. Hannah, you talked about how you've really been working on your free throws. What have you improved, and what was it like to step up with the game on the line and be so crucial in that moment? Um, I think it helps with my confidence a lot. Um, going into these big games, I'm going to need to knock down free throws, and um, I think this is a stepping stone to that for sure. Uh, we'll go here in the second row, Brent. There we go. Chantel Jennings with The Athletic. Caitlin, question for you. I was talking with Kristen Meyer earlier this year, and she said that you've always had this ability to watch what was happening in the crowd and the court. She said <laughs> if someone was eating popcorn in the 12th row, you'd know. <laughs> you've done that in college. Like, you're looking into the stands a lot. Did you do that more tonight, I'm wondering? And also, like, when you do that, what are you or who are you looking for? Um, I try not to look in the stands the best I can. Um, I don't know. I think, you know, my family has always been people that have been there for me through the ups and downs of my journey and I think more than anything they just look at me and like motivate me and I think that's just a sign of reassurance or I'll look to our bench and get that too and um but like I've always been one to play to the crowd like that's just who I am like that's what I kind of do and an entertainer in a way like I always want to get them going and um I thought our crowd was tremendous tonight they really willed us to this victory and um yeah, I think I, I definitely do it. So at times, I'm not even aware as much. Sometimes I'm just looking around. Um, but I think it's being able to lock in at the same time. Like, sometimes I don't even notice how loud the environment's getting because I'm so focused on the court. Kyle Huseman, Hawkeye Report. Question for both of you guys. Um, this game went completely different than a lot of your guys' games this season. I mean, 64 to 54. How are you guys able to get it done in, in a game that's completely different from the way that you guys normally do it? And then secondly, where does this win rank in terms of toughest ones mentally and physically to get through? This is definitely up there with the best of them for mentally and emotionally and physically grinding this out and getting the win. But 
to be honest, like looking back on our journey last year, to me, this is like one of the hardest rounds in the NCAA tournament. Everybody's really good. You're expected to win. You're on your home court. We have all the pressure in the world. Um, they have absolutely nothing to lose to come in here and upset us. And, um, you know, that happened my sophomore year. Last year, we were in a game that was even closer than this one. Um, so I think our group was never flustered by any means when they went and tied it up. Yes, we had so many opportunities tonight where we got to a 10-point lead, a 7-point lead, and we couldn't figure out a way to extend it. And honestly, we just didn't shoot the ball very well. We just didn't make shots um, that we normally make. We didn't shoot it too great from the three-point line. But I think that should give us a lot of motivation. You know, West Virginia is, you know, a really good basketball team, and we found a way to, to win. We changed up our defenses. Um, we got big rebounds when it mattered. We made big free throws. Um, so I think that's the biggest thing is – there's a lot of positive to take away from this when maybe we didn't even play our best basketball or didn't look as pretty. Um, I think that's more fulfilling of a win for us than you know going out there and winning by 30 points. Go to the middle back. Uh, Jason Rude, KCHA Radio. Uh, this one's for my nine-year-old who threw up this morning on the way into school and couldn't come to the game tonight. So uh, she's curious to know, you know, you've, you've reached a number of the goals that you're looking for in your college career. She's curious to know, as am I, um, what are your goals once you get to the M or WNBA? Oh, gosh. I think that's a loaded question. I think first and foremost, like, my focus is solely on this team, and that was one of the reasons that I made this decision of, you know, letting everybody know, like, I'm leaving after this year. I can have a lot of closure. I could walk off the court tonight and know that was my last game ever in this arena. And, you know, that's sad. And um, But at the same time, you know, when this journey does end, I know, you know, the WNBA, it's a, it's a quick flip. you got to be ready for it. But, um, yeah, I think the time will come when I sit down and think about all my professional goals and aspirations. But for right now, my goal is to help this team win a national title and um, have a lot of fun doing it and smile on the way out. And, um, enjoy every single second because it's gone in the blink of an eye. I can't believe I'm a senior and I just played my last game here. So uh, I think that's the biggest thing. Zachary Draves, SB Nation Swish Appeal. Uh, my question is for Hannah. Um, I, Coach Bluter alluded to it earlier, um, how the offense generally gets a lot of attention with this team, uh, but defense certainly uh, ruled the night. Uh, what does that say about this team in terms of defensive prowess when the offense gets a lot of attention? Um, I think a lot of people think we're only an offensive team, you know, um, and we do work on defense all the time. Um, and. I'm glad we got to show that tonight. Um, that's what won this game. So I'm really proud of that. Go ahead. Howard Kessler, New York Post. Caitlin, were there any times during the game, during breaks in action, maybe not when it's going on, but where you did try and soak it in a little bit, where you did try and be like, oh, this is different. This is not ever going to happen again. Did you ever have that think, when it was? I think at the beginning of the game during the national anthem, that's just something I've tried to do all year long is like soak in our crowds and look around and enjoy it and kind of take a deep breath. And, you know, you look around, it's like standing room only, like the place is so hot because there's so many people in there and there's no air conditioning. And I just look around and I, that's when I try to soak it in the most. And then obviously the game starts and you're not really too worried about it. And then at the end of the game, you know, I would have never left the court if I wasn't forced to get off. But um I think those are the two moments that, you know, I soaked it in the most. Right here. Yeah, Michael Vopel, ESPN.com. Caitlin, I think only seven assists for Iowa tonight, not something you're going to see very often um, mm. in the whole history of Iowa basketball. Know, right? Can you talk about being able to – you mentioned having to win a different way, but when you have to win when you don't have the ball movement that you guys are, are used to having. Yeah, I think it's – it's definitely difficult when people are out pressuring and denying us like they were. I think it's definitely something we can learn from. There's going to be teams we face, um, you know, going into the next round that are going to pressure us the same exact way. I, I thought we, you know, we did, we should have ripped through. We should have been in triple threat. We should have been ready to make passes. Um, but also I thought we drove downhill really well. And that's, that's what you're going to get when people are out pressuring, pressuring you. Um, but yeah, I mean, seven assists is not Iowa basketball, but at the same time, we didn't make many shots, so we only made 17 shots. Um, we made five threes. I was the only one to make a three. So, uh, like I said, our offense wasn't stellar by any means tonight, but I'm just so proud of our group. Like, our defense was really phenomenal, and um, I know we'll get right back to it. You know, it's kind of, you know, an anomaly, and that's, that's what happens sometimes. But you got to be gritty and find a way to win, and that's exactly what this team did. Last question for the student-athletes. Uh, Tanner Mounts, U92. This is a question for Caitlin. You know, tonight was one of the – 
best crowds that I've seen since I've been covering games. Mm -hmm. What would you say about the support that they've given you over mm -hmm. your last four years now that you've just completed your last game here? Yeah, I think I could probably talk about them for a really long time. And I think more than anything is just like, thank you. I'm, re I'm very grateful that I got to play in an environment that supports women's athletics the way that they do, not only women's basketball, but and to be honest, they've been doing this before I ever stepped on campus. Maybe it wasn't quite at the magnitude that it is now, but you know, these people and these fans show up and they have shown up and they will continue to show up. Um, they understand how good our sport is. They understand where the sport's going. Um, but they've, you know, shared in a lot of really special memories for, for myself and a journey that, you know, I've changed a lot as a person and as a basketball player over the course of my last four years. And they've been a big part of that too. So I think the biggest thing is just thank you. I'm forever grateful. And I hope there's a lot of times where I can come back and be in the crowd at sold out Carver Hawkeye Arena cheering for, you know, young girls that you know, want to be like us. Thanks, Caitlin. And thanks, Hannah. <clears throat> okay, we'll go to questions for Coach Bluter. We'll start here in the front. Dennis. Dennis Dodd, CBS Sports. Lisa, you knew West Virginia was physical. You knew they were very good defensively. If someone had told you before the game you'd be held 30 under your average, Caitlin would have one field goal in the last 16 minutes, and you guys would have one field goal in the fourth quarter, how would you have liked your chances? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably not very good. I mean, you know, that's um, typically not our style, but we found a way. And that's – I'm so proud of this team for being able to divert from what, you know, usually works for us and, and find a different way to win. Um, again, I thought – against that pressure defense that we only turned the ball over 15 times, that is the lowest of any West Virginia opponent all year. And, and so I am extremely proud of our women for keeping their composure in that situation. It certainly helped playing with a, with a terrific home crowd. We're in the front. Uh, Luke Blaine, Daily Athenaeum. So staying on the note of defense, uh, you all were held to your lowest uh, first half total of the season at 26. So what was going on in the first half and what uh, went right in the second? The second half, we got to the free throw line early, you know, in both quarters. And that was our best offense, was drawing fouls and getting to the free throw line. We're a good free throw shooting team. And by far, you know, getting to the free throw line was the easiest way for us to score. And, you know, with that kind of pressure defense, you're going to foul a lot. And I'm glad we had a crew that called it tonight. I mean, there was 57 free throws shot in the Princeton game. So this is not unusual for that to happen. Uh, Tanner Mounts, U92 Radio. Um, you you kind of go back to last year, and you had a very similar game against Georgia here in the round of 32. You, you, you heard Caitlin talk about how this one wasn't as close, but they used that. Did you see that in your team's huddle this year where they were a little more composed than they might have been last year? And did they use last year's experience to kind of help them in a close game this year? You know, we didn't talk about it specifically, but I think it was in everybody's mind that we were able to pull that out last year. And I think that gave us confidence. When you're in situations and you can use that experience to fall back on, um, you know, we're going to use that whenever we can. I, I think that helped us tonight. Uh, Chantel, or go ahead. Jen Hatfield with the next. Um, Coach, you know, you, you talked about West Virginia's defense, and, but also your lack of turnovers. So I'm curious, you know, when you, when you got in that half court when you were trying to run your offense, what was most challenging against that West Virginia defense once you kind of got through the initial traps? Yeah. Um, I don't want to give anybody a scouting report, so I'm just going to keep that to myself right now. I mean, you can watch the film and know what bothered us there, but, I mean, obviously, right? You saw the good good defense that they performed, so I'll leave it at that. Chantel. Lisa, Chantel Jennings with The Athletic. Not many coaches coach generational players, and fewer still sort of do it in a time of, like, right now when the sport is growing as it is and more eyes are on it. I'm just curious what this last year coaching Caitlin, like, how has it changed you as a person and a coach? Wow. Um... I mean, I, I just think I appreciate her so much, her skills. Um, I'm, I'm very appreci I, I appreciate how she has handled this. I, I think her crown is heavy. And I mean, she has been the face of women's basketball, and you can even say men's basketball, all year long. And for, you to, for her to do that every single night, and really never have a bad night, um, to, 
to do that with the, seeing the best defense that she can get every single night, everybody doing different things to her, um, pulling off being a great teammate, not having people be jealous of her on this team, um, filming a commercial one day, being in practice fully ready to go the next day, um, that has impressed me. And uh, I, I guess I'm just more appreciative of um, what these, what these young ladies are going through today as far as social media and the haters out there and I am I think I just appreciate them and and really feel like god they, they got they have a really it's a great time to be a female athlete and it's also a really hard time it's both it really is Kyle Kyle Huseman Hawkeye Report we've talked a lot about West Virginia's defense tonight but you you mentioned your guys defense holding them to 54 um, what did you feel like you guys did well tonight and what adjustments did you make throughout the game to, to kind of counter against them we were trying to mix up our defenses a little bit um, but I thought our players were pretty locked in um, and knew the scouting report really well knew their personnel very well you know Gabby Marshall doesn't have a point tonight she worked her tail off on defense and that's worth a lot. And then she has another block tonight. I mean, you know, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, no, I think our, our defense was very good, and I think it's because they, they were so focused on it, and they knew against a really good defensive team like that they were going to have to play defense. They were going to have to match the defensive intensity. Steve over on the left there. Steve Silverman, Ivy Hoops Online. Coach, just to follow up on that last question for a minute, you limited Quinterly to only 15 points tonight, and I think Harrison only maybe six. Um, can you talk a little bit about what you were doing to limit those two very dynamic guards? Yeah, that was our focus coming into there. You know, We held Jordan to three points, and that's really hard to do. Um, she's so fast going downhill, and uh, you know, JJ was, She's an incredible player, but again, our defensive focus was on those two players, and we knew we were going to give up some open shots to other people, but we really felt other people are going to have to beat us. We're not going to let those two beat us. Other people are going to have to do that, and, and I think our, you know, I mean, there were some people that stepped up and made some shots. Kaya Watson, she played a really good game tonight, one of her best, I think. Um, you know, Jayla Hemingway came in and played a really nice game, too, but Again, you take the ball out of the hands of those two players, it's different. Zachary Draves, SB Nation Swish Appeal. Uh, Coach, I'm curious to know about your thoughts on Sid's performance tonight. <laughs> 13 points, yeah. seven rebounds, goes five for five from the, from the line, not to mention that she started. What does that say about her in terms of where she was, where she is, and where she's going? I'm so glad that you asked about Sid because Honestly, we were tied up with two minutes, right? Her drive, left-hand layup, fouled, three-point play, that was a huge momentum for us. Um, so I, I'm really proud of Sid. Um, and, and her ball handling has improved so much. Her confidence has improved so much. But, I mean, rebounding-wise, she ends up with seven. We had a lot of good rebounding performances, though. Kate has 10. Hannah has 11. Um, but Sid having to step into a starting position at this time of the year is a really difficult thing to do. I mean, that could upset the tempo of a lot of teams. But I think our team has always respected Sid so much and what she brought, brought to the table. Um, I'm proud of the rest of the group for not hanging our heads that we don't have Molly, but instead is, okay, now we get Sid in the starting lineup. And it's just a mentally you know, positive way to think about it. Okay, we'll go to the middle for our last question for Coach. Uh, Jason Drew, KCHA. Uh, along the same vein, Hannah Stulke, uh, 11 total rebounds, you know, five on one end, six on the other end. Just curious your thoughts on her play tonight in the paint and then also uh, had, uh, what, uh, 12 points as well. Yeah, I, she rebounded the ball really well for us tonight, um, and that we needed that. Um, we needed her speed on the defensive end, I think. Um, I think she could have been a little more um, on attack mode on offense tonight. Um, I, I think she passed the ball out too easily. I think she could have went to work a little bit more in there on the offensive end. And I want her to do that because she's really explosive and she's really good and she didn't show that part of her game tonight. But she helped us so much on the defensive end, the rebounding end. 
Um, and, and just, you know, being able to transition like she does. I mean, we didn't get that many transition offensive points, but her being able to transition back on defense was, was also really important for us. And I see Christy there. I just want to shout out to my Christy there. Love you. Our kid captain from the very first game, Christy's been with us on this journey, and I'm so proud of her. Thank you for being with us, Christy, this whole time. All right. Thank you, Coach. Congratulations.